Guys, if you're only going to watch the first 10 seconds of this video, I just hope that you can take away that failure is okay, letting people down is okay, it's all okay, just don't let these obstacles stop you from fulfilling your passion or dream. Hi guys, Rajan here, also known as Dentist Raj, uh, and the video today is just going to be a little bit different. A few years ago, through no one else's fault but my own, I probably went through the biggest failure uh, of my life, uh, and it was incredibly difficult process. I think I know, and, and everyone knows that, we, we all go through failure in life, everyone goes through failure and, and these are things that you learn from. However, failure itself can be extremely difficult to talk about, extremely intimidating and, and extremely sad when, when it is something that you're so passionate about. So I'm really hoping that uh, by making this video uh, I can show everyone out there, maybe if you've gone through failure recently or you're still struggling, struggling to get over a past failure, um, that, that it is possible to get through that. It is completely natural and normal to be feeling uh, however the way you're feeling right now. I really do hope this video kind of gives you an opportunity to hear someone else's story and show that you're really not alone through this process. So just in terms of the layout of this video, I'll begin by giving some kind of context and backstory about my first year, uh, what happened, uh, how I enjoyed it, um, why maybe I got myself into this situation. Uh, I'll then go into the whole retaking, failing and retaking process uh, and then get on to you know, how it affected me, uh, how it affected um, the people in my life and, and then moving forward and being able to get over it. So uh, I'll drop some timestamps in the video or also in the description so if you want to skip along to any of those parts to focus on uh, you know how to get over the failure or what I experienced during the failure you can more than welcome to do that. Before we get started guys, uh, if you want to find a bit more about me, go follow me on Instagram and on Facebook at The Dentist Raj. And I've also started a TikTok channel, jumped on the bandwagon, uh, to post some funny videos uh, and some really informative videos about dentistry and productivity. So go follow me on those. Uh, and if you want to look forward to uh, more YouTube videos, which are going to be coming um, soon, all about dentistry, all about productivity um, and, and all areas around that, then do follow, do subscribe, uh, leave a like, comment anything. I'm always going to answer your comment. And that really goes a long way to to motivate me to bring these videos out for you guys. So I hope you enjoy, I uh, hope you find it helpful and yeah, let's get into it. So as they say, let's start in the beginning. I managed to get into dental school after working really hard. I've made a whole video about how I got into dental school, the pathway of getting into dental school. So if you wanna find out a bit more about that, watch the video, but um, I won't go into that. I worked really hard. I was really proud uh, of getting into dental school. And then in October 2016, finally got my opportunity to go to King's College London to study dentistry. And safe to say, I couldn't be more excited. I was over the moon, finally able to go study my passion, but also be independent and finally, you know, get away from home and be a university student. And it was the most exciting time of my life. Even though everything happened, my first year of university was the best experience of my life. I met people that I knew I was going to become lifelong friends with. Um, I made absolutely amazing memories. Uh, people who were in London in 2016 know about Ministry Milkshake Tuesdays, Saucy Fridays, it seems a world away now that we're in lockdown and COVID, but those were absolutely amazing memories. I haven't even got on to mentioning Wednesday uh, sports nights at Guys Bar with the amazing uh, guys at GKT Cricket. And it's safe to say I had the standard freshers experience where you think that you've had the best first three or four weeks that you've ever had at university. Now I came to King's College with the uh, same enthusiasm uh, and passion for dentistry that I still hold to this day. I was really excited to go out there and be a dentist uh, and I was really excited to get my hands on and be really clinical. However, I think initially the course was a little bit too knowledge and textbook based and I really wanted to get my hands on, be a dentist, see patients and we weren't able to do that which is as expected uh, at the start of first year dental school and I think that affected my initial passion. Now I like living life with no regrets, it's one of my mottos and I don't think you should regret anything, I think you should experience everything as you're living in the moment and you then learn from um, mistakes that you make and, and things that you wish could have been different but you learn from that. I think looking back on it I became consumed and really excited about the social life and going out three times a week and meeting loads of new people and I think that just took over me for a while. So we had our first formative assessment in November and we then had a formative assessment is essentially a progress test but it doesn't count towards anything and then we had uh, in January and in April our summer two exams and the January one counted for 10% approximately 10% and the April one's about 90%. So the November and January exams through that first term I hadn't done a lot of work, been going out three times a week, been making loads of friends, been having loads of fun, I did not keep on top of my work at all. This meant that by the time these November or January exams came around, uh, e even in the Christmas holidays I wasn't up to scratch, 
work-wise and I failed both those exams pretty badly. Now for some reason even though I failed this, these exams pretty badly it, it didn't it didn't ignite something in me it didn't it didn't spark something in me I don't know whether that's my past experiences and privilege of just thinking that it was all going to be okay that some teacher or tutor or parent or uh, anyone was going to come up kick me in the backside um, and, and tell me to get get my act on. Um, I was young, I was naive um, and, and I hadn't become accustomed to independently learning and I think that that was a big reason for me not being sparked by those really poor performances. For those of you who either are going to university or just starting out university, really try and work out initially what kind of a worker you are. You have to do that all by yourself. When you get to university, it's all on you and you need to work out whether you're someone who doesn't need to do too much work till the end, whether you need to do progressive work over the course of a year, I think like me, um, always keeping notes, always keeping on track. Never compare yourself to your friends. Always be honest about the uh, kind of worker uh, and person that you are. I think I'm extremely privileged to be friends with so many intelligent people, but I think what I drew from that was, oh, as long as I do the same amount of work as them, I'll be absolutely fine, which is the wrong way to think about it, and, and it wasn't correct. And it's a really dangerous way to think about it. So be honest and really try and work out how much work you need to put in to attain the grades and marks that you want. And I'm telling you this because I didn't do that. And so once our end of year exams uh, sorry, came along in April, even though I worked really hard in Easter uh, and I really put my mind to it, I was trying to catch up on so much work. I hadn't done enough work in first term, hadn't done enough work in second term. I was um, either catching up with my work or looking at lectures for the first time, not knowing what to prioritize and um, essentially that meant that I was in no position to take the exams in the summer uh, and I obviously failed. And so having got my results, uh, having got, got them emailed, um, I then got an email from the King's Dental Institute uh, and by their policy it said that you'll be taking retakes, I think it was about six weeks, five, six weeks later, four, five, six weeks later, I don't remember exactly, and um, that by their uh, policy you get two sittings for your exam. So the first was the one that we failed uh, and the second sitting will be the final sitting before your studentship is terminated if you so fail. And that's when the fear started, really started kicking in. I hadn't told um, my parents that hadn't been performing too well during the course of the year hadn't told my sister, hadn't really told anyone uh, other than my friends in the dental uh, lot who, who you kind of had to talk to. And, and who does? Who wants to tell people that you failed badly? The reason we don't tell people is because we're embarrassed or we're worried about what they're going to say, we're scared, um, we're ashamed of ourselves for our performance. Uh, but sometimes it does take someone agreeing with you, telling you, yes, you're underperforming, yes, you're not doing well enough, get back in shape, for you to realise what on earth am I doing? Uh, and sometimes being accountable for, for someone other than yourself can force you to get back into the swing of things. And yes, I wish at that time I was accountable for my own actions and was able to be like, no, you're doing badly, raise your game, you're being an embarrassment to yourself. But sometimes, and I disagree with anyone who says this isn't the case, you do feel like if you're letting someone else down uh, and, and they let you know, um, that is extra incentive to work harder. And so I do wish that I told my parents, I do wish that I told my sister, and I do wish that they told me, Rajan, this is really bad, this is embarrassing, and I'd be like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I'm, I'm potentially messing up my life, but I couldn't see that at the time. At the time I was just like, you know what, I'll get over it, you know what, I'll be fine, you know what, the next exam, I'll put it together. Uh, and, and by the time I got to the reset, I was really stressing, I obviously had to tell my parents at that point. And so I told them, and they were supportive, and they were like, work hard for this exam, you've got four or five weeks, um, and, and, and you'll be fine. But again, I was trying to recover on so much content that I hadn't focused on, all the physiological systems, all the pharmacological knowledge, uh, all of the past paper questions that I wanted to go over, and I did, probably didn't focus on the things that the exam was actually going to focus on. And that's because I was scared, I was worried, was, had I, was I going to embarrass my family even more, was I going to potentially ruin and chuck my future away. Um, the one chance that I got at dental school was, was that gonna be up in a puff, puff of smoke? And so naturally all these thoughts are going through your head and that distracts you from actually focusing and uh, paying attention to the task at hand, which is get this amount of work done. I remember having those exams in June of 2017 and it was two papers over the course of two days, uh, two two hour papers. And I remember sitting them and thinking they'd gone a lot better than the first sittings uh, of my exams in April. I, I was pretty confident, I, I was like, I think I've done enough um, to, to be able to pass and get through to second year to BDS2 and that was really the end of that for, for, for a few weeks and I was quietly confident uh, and I remember talking to my friends, a couple of my friends had to retake as well and we were all kind of like, you know what, I think that could have gone uh, a lot worse and, and I'm mildly happy with how it had gone. And so honestly, that worry, that embarrassment, those nerves kind of went for that period of two, three weeks when I thought all the work that I put in had come out trumps and uh, had been worth it. 
So it was it was actually if, was it the 21st? It was the 21st of July, and that was a good seven weeks after uh, the resets. And so I had had seven weeks to almost forget about it, think that I was going to be going into second year. I'd already actually planned my living arrangements for September in London. You don't need to sort your arrangements out until early summer because there were so many properties available. But by by June after my retakes, I had sorted my living arrangements out with um, uh, two of my really close friends. I was really excited to live with them. I was so excited to get started with second year, go back to university. And then I got those two emails. The first email uh, came through at around 12 p.m. And um, yeah, the email essentially said that I got 49% in my retake uh, across the two exams. Pass mark was 50. So just seeing that, it, I remember um, it had all of the um, scores of what you'd got in the specific topics and then one big number of your overall mark, it was 49. And it said fail next to it. And so I remember thinking, shit, like, what does that mean? All these thoughts and worries I'd had before sitting the exam came rushing back and now I was really worried because all of those nerves and worry and, and thought previously had all been, you know, circumspect and almost in the back of your mind because it hadn't actually happened. And now it was reality and I was really worried, I was really scared. I spent about 10 minutes in my room thinking, what does this mean? Does this mean that I failed? and I'm kicked out of dental schools as per the policy. Does this mean I've only failed by 1% and so they'll let me through because I only failed by 1%. So that's one mark over the course of 400 questions. So are they gonna let me go on the basis of that one mark? All these thoughts were going through my head, the worry I'm gonna have to tell my parents, I'm gonna have to tell my friends, what's gonna happen in my living situation next year, uh, if I'm allowed back to university. And ultimately the biggest thing, have I thrown away my future uh, of a chance in, uh, in dentistry? And so all of these thoughts were going through my head. And about 10 minutes later, uh, I remember I moved from my bedroom to the bathroom and um, I was looking at my phone and I got a second email from the uh, head of exams uh, at uh, the Dental Institute. And it had said that you failed your second sitting of dental school uh, and therefore your studentship has been terminated. And reading those words, they still bring um, tingles through my spine, one of the scariest things I've ever seen. I was genuinely so scared and so worried and embarrassed for myself, uh, embarrassed of what I'd done to my family, let my family down, which I'm, people might think is silly, but of course I've let my family down. How much money has my parents spent putting me through school, getting me those private tutor lessons to make sure I get those GCSEs, those A-levels, then sending me to university? How much do the how much do the university fees cost nowadays? And having thrown all that away in the space of a year, once I'd been giving a tiny little bit of independency um, for the first time in my life. And that really scared me. Uh, alongside, obviously, as I've mentioned, the thought of what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? Like, what, what do I have now? Um, and obviously, in hindsight, it's silly to think those things, but whoever says they don't think those things is completely lying. And for those of you out there who are currently thinking those things, don't worry at all. It is going to be absolutely fine. Hear me out. Just hear me out through my story. Keep going. It's okay. I'm so sorry that you're going through this, but I promise you it is going to be okay. And I would highly advise anyone going through something like that right now to find someone uh, to talk to, find someone that you can confide in, be honest about what, how you feel, um, what you think the future is going to entail, and really open up. Don't try and hide it, don't try and be strong. Uh, it's what I did, I, I didn't try, I didn't like telling too many people how I was feeling, or uh, I, don't, I was just like, yeah, it's gonna be okay, I'll be fine, we'll find out um, whatever happens um, soon. So all those things are going through your head, talk about them, be honest and open about them, and I promise you it'll really help and speed up the process of recovery. Obviously, uh, I had to inform my parents, I told my mom she was incredibly angry and upset, which is completely understandable. Don't hold that against her at all. Um, I, I, I brought this situation to myself and to the family um, and deservedly so she was upset. Called my dad um, who was extremely supportive and um, was like okay don't worry when I get home he was at work when I get home we'll talk about it we'll discuss um, what to do and so when he got home we all sat down uh, and decided what the next step was going to be. That was an exceptionally difficult conversation. Obviously I'd hid how hard um, I found that first year and how little I'd worked and um, it was inc incredibly humiliating to have to tell my parents that I had essentially wasted a year of their money. But like I said, they're incredibly supportive. They'd known that what happened had happened and how we're going to move forward. And the first decision that we had to make was whether we were going to appeal the uh, termination of the studentship. And the whole basis of whether we were going to appeal through mitigating circumstances was whether I still wanted to do, to do dentistry. My father's a dentist and he sat me down and he was like, so are you sure this is still 
what you want to do for the rest of your life and how you want to spend the rest of your life. And I'm still exceptionally passionate about dentistry. I'm so passionate about healthcare, love helping people. And I think dentistry for me personally is the best way to interact with people, um, help them make, make their lives a better place um, and, and do it in a way that I am also enjoying uh, helping these patients. And I still wanted to do that. I reiterated that to my father and uh, he was like, okay, that's great, that's sorted. As long as that's honestly what you think. And he said it a couple of times, are you sure, are you sure? And so that was the big decision that I personally had to make uh, with my family. And I decided, yes, 100% I want to do dentistry for the rest of my life. Um, and so we went ahead with the appeal. I was trained from going into the basis of our appeal on mitigating circumstances for obviously um, my own privacy, but what I would say is that if you're going through any bad period in your life, just believe that it is happening for a reason and um, there, there, there is always a reason for it and there's always a silver lining to everything that happens. I think you always got to try and live life like that and in this case luckily there was a silver lining um, and so I was able to appeal uh, through mitigating circumstances. Luckily I'm sure you'll guess by the fact that I am in dental school that the appeal was successful. Uh, they accepted my mitigating circumstances uh, and they said that I'd have to retake the year. Not the most ideal situation because we said in the appeal I've missed out by one mark despite these circumstances so is it possible that um, we is it possible that uh, I'm able to go straight through second year but they obviously said no you failed the exam that's not allowed so we'll allow you to retake first year and that was the um, best of any real scenario that I could ask for and I was given another opportunity and I remember I found this out when we were actually in Greece uh, on a family holiday in Mykonos and um, I was on the beach uh, and I got the email uh, I opened up PDF got told that the appeal had been successful and it was a really good few days for us and I really thought that it was a big weight off my shoulders um, my stomach wasn't churning anymore and I really thought okay I can move forward now um, and you know just start a new chapter in my life and put this behind me it's important for me to be honest and the truth is I didn't feel like there was a new chapter being written because I couldn't shake off the fact that I had retaken a year of university. I'd done really well in my GCSEs, I'd done really well in my A-levels, yes everyone has to go through failure, I'd gone through sport failure but not necessarily in my academics and this was something that was going to essentially stay with me for the rest of my life. And even though I've been told by people who I've spoken to about it, including my dad, including other dental professionals, that no one, and I'm telling you this now, and it's the truth, and I used to tell this to people about how I felt that, who's gonna care in 20 years that you had to retake one year of your university? If anything, it gives you a better opportunity to become a better dental student, and that failure that you go through earlier on in your career means that you'll be in a better place uh, in the later stages. However, you can tell yourself that as much as you want, honestly, but in the moment, it is the worst feeling. I and mean, I only had myself to blame, and that's the hardest thing, because you do only blame yourself, and you start digging a deeper and deeper hole, and be like, this is your fault that you're here, you're in this situation. And whenever anyone asks, oh, how was it? That's the last thing you want to talk about, because then you just start thinking about it again, and so you just shake it off, and you say, oh, no, it's fine, like, who's going to care about it in 20 years? All these things which are true, but it's not what you're actually thinking. And inside, I couldn't convince myself that what had happened wasn't going to affect my future, it wasn't going to affect my career. I couldn't shake the fact that, you know, people were looking at me being like, oh, he retook first year, he can't be that clever. Um, he retook first year, why is he here? Like, these things that probably no one at all is thinking of. Okay, probably you might be sitting there thinking, like, no one was thinking that. Any of my friends watching me, like, no one ever thought that. I completely agree with you. I'd shoot, I completely agree that I don't think anyone was thinking that. But those of you who are in a situation similar to the one I was or have been, know that that's what you think. You think that, not that the whole world is about you, but you think that this is what's going through people's heads. And that's the last thing that you want people to be thinking about you. But you can't shake the fact that you believe that the mistake and failure that you've made is going to follow you around for the rest of your life. Anyone who goes through a failure honestly think that it's a lot worse than it really is. Um, it can consume you, it can uh, overcome you. And the most important, important thing to actually understand is that everyone goes through a failure, okay? People might not talk about their failure. People might not mention that they have gone through a failure like you, but I promise you that every single person that you know has gone through a failure of some kind. They are also going through something difficult, something hard, or they have done in their life, or they will in their life. The most important thing is how you overcome and react to that failure. And I did it terribly initially. I let it overcome me, I let it define who I was as a person, I was a person who had to retake a year, use it as a joke, all these kinds of things. And that's completely the wrong way to go about it because then you, you can't shake it off if, if you're letting it um, control your life. And the sooner I genuinely, honestly realized that it wasn't gonna affect my life, that it wasn't gonna affect my future, it wasn't gonna affect my career, the more weight it was off my shoulders, the happier I became, the um, lighter the world looked. Trying to drive all that negative dark energy towards a way of getting out and improving 
your you as a person, your mentality, whether it's you failed an exam and you're now going to be a better student and this is going to drive you, just finding a way to manipulate those dark and negative feelings in a way that's going to benefit you is an incredibly good way and the most efficient way of, um, of getting over this, um, this, this failure. So I personally think that overcoming failure can be broken down into three stages. The first is accepting a failure. So I think this took me an exceptionally long time, perhaps a year after it actually happened until maybe I did pass my BDS1 exam a second time, that I was actually able to accept that I failed and it's okay to fail. Everyone fails, it happens in life, you make mistakes, but it's how you react to it. So I break overcoming failure down uh, into three stages. The first would be actually accepting the failure. So this is a lot easier said than done, but realize that failing is okay. Everyone fails, people fail, you make mistakes, you're human, it happens in life. Yes, some failures will be bigger than others. Yes, you might be thinking that the failure that you're going through is the worst thing in the world that anyone could go through and it's all your fault and maybe it's someone else's fault, whatever. You have to accept that it happens and it happens in everybody's walk of life, in all walks of life rather, and it's okay. And right now it feels like the worst thing in the world, but the sooner you can accept that it happens, that it has happened and you can't change that now, uh, and how you're gonna be able to overcome that, that is the first stage of being able to move on from that failure and not letting it overcome you as a person. Which for me, it did, uh, I didn't accept it. For a long time, I didn't accept that it's part of my life and I could talk about it and I wouldn't be ashamed uh, and embarrassed. But the sooner I did that, uh, which wasn't probably for a year, the sooner I was able to accept the failure and try and move on with my life. The second would be analyzing the failure. So for me, I had to analyze why I failed first year and I think it was pretty self-explanatory. I didn't know how I worked. I was naive, I was young, and I didn't know how to study as a university student. I thought that someone would tap me on the shoulder every two weeks to tell me how I was doing, how my progress was going. And that didn't happen for two weeks, didn't happen for four weeks, didn't happen for four months. And suddenly I was like, shit, I'm so far behind, what am I doing? And that's why I would say for me, uh, I was, it was very easy for me to analyze my failure and work out why I failed. Um, for you, it might be a bit harder, but actually spend time once you've accepted that failure to analyze why that failure occurred. Why do you think that happened? Why do you think that made a mistake? How short term or long term were the causes of that failure? What were the situations or moments which led to that failure? Really analyze it and spend time thinking about why that failure occurred and why you did fail in that specific instance. And then try and move on to stage three. And stage three is actually working out how you're going to learn from that failure and improve from that failure. This is obviously the most essential part of failure, uh, is learning from it and becoming better um, because of it. I'll put loads of different um, quotes from uh, exceptionally famous uh, individuals about failure and what they think making mistakes really mean. But uh, my favorite is from Winston Churchill, who said that success consists of going from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. You'll make a failure now, you've made that failure now, you've accepted that failure, you've analyzed that failure, you might not make that failure again. But the important thing is you accept that failure again, you analyze that failure again, Okay, and then you again consistently work on how you're going to improve and uh, get over that failure and make sure that it doesn't happen again and try and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, and that's the most important um, thing from all of this because I think if you are able to learn from that failure, uh, in my case, at least luckily touch wood, um, the last two, three years I have learned from it uh, and I have been able to put my head down and work a lot harder um, and have be better with my time management, be better with my social work balance. Um, understand that I can't compare myself to my friends and sometimes I have to put a little bit more effort in with work. All these little things have helped me accept my failure and, and anal I've analysed it and I've been able to learn from it and improve as a dental student. Whether you're in that same boat as a student and you need to analyse how you failed and then become and, and improve, become better from it and improve from it, or it's a failure from a different walk of life and you need to analyze your failure and work out how you're going to improve uh, from that. But all these different quotes uh, are essential to look at and uh, understand that even the most successful people in this world um, fail every single day, but they will believe that those mistakes and those failures are what has brought them to their current situations. And that is why accepting, analyzing, your failures and then improving from it is so essential to all walks of life and it's normal guys it's absolutely normal and really hope you believe that it is normal and it's not the end of the world trust me so i hope that video gave you a better insight into my failure um helped you kind of understand that it's okay to fail uh, people fail it happens in life but um hopefully gives you a bit more of a positive mindset hopefully it gets you to understand that you're not the only person who's thinking this way. I was in a really dark place and a really sad place for a long time, uh, having failed, not being able to accept what had happened. But then after I was able to accept it, analyze why it happened and improve from it, 
um, I, I, I've been able to come out of it and be be confident enough to talk about it and, and help you guys. And so if I can do it, I 100% know that you guys can do it as well. And if you're still watching this video right now, one, a huge thank you. But secondly, if you're this willing to think about your failure, accept that failure and analyze that failure, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So don't worry about it at all. Be confident and never let any single failure get in the way of what you want to achieve in life. I'm the Dentist Raj. Subscribe, like the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.